to Facebook. I'll check my page on Facebook to see that we're there. Not there yet. We're probably making our way there. That's the link. And yes, we are live now on Facebook. Right, let me go and share it. Okay, we're just setting up people. Morning and uh, welcome to this chat. We're on BeLive.tv. If you make a comment on Facebook, on my page, on the link, which is that link, then we will see the comment and we'll be able to bring it on air and uh, answer your questions live or live-ish. Um, as Kevin just sets up and copies the, uh, the page out. Got it. Okay, right, we're good. Uh, welcome and good, good afternoon, Kevin. How are you? I'm really good, Stephen. Thank you very much. How are you going? I'm, I'm going well. I'm going well. And this week, uh, we changed channels. We were on Blue Jeans last week, and this week we're on Be Live. So if you're watching this broadcast, we can uh, see you and we can see that three people are watching at the moment. So thank you. If you want to say hi, we'll say hi back. Uh, and we're going to pick up where we left off last week uh, on uh, creating content. I've got it right this week. Um, and recap the YouTube. Yeah, last week, um, getting through the technical side of things, uh, we were going and talking about, uh, hi, Peter. Um, we were talking about uh, where we can find content ideas from. Hi, Sean. Um, and <clears throat> some of the ideas that we came up with were to look at uh, local press what was going on in the press, uh, news events and stuff like that, and how we could use that content to spin into something for our own business. Um, often we can use them as examples to create um, uh, what we call, uh, so it, beca it's be it becomes quite topical content. Yeah, it's very up to date, it's, it's very in the moment. Now, the longevity behind that content may not be as long, but the, exposure that it will get will be quite impactful it will be quite there and then because everyone's looking for it so we talked about that we talked about going on to youtube and using that as a research stroke search engine platform um okay peter see you later that was really quick um and we talked about youtube for all of those reasons and going off and searching some of our keywords and some of the stuff that we may think would be good content and then actually finding out by other people because YouTube's been around for a long time nothing is ever new these days so is that type of topic something that's searched for and we can find that out by just looking at what other videos people have done what their statistics are on their videos and uh, if it's popular then we may want to explore going further down that, that avenue so that's we what we covered last week. We know that Google is the uh, largest search engine, but YouTube is the second world's largest second search engine, isn't it? Correct. Yeah. So if you're looking for, and also, I mean, can we look at Twitter as well? Sort of trending topics, sort of thing. Yeah, I, I think the the key to it really is is um, I think you can go along and look. F You've got to understand what it is. The the big problem people have is they don't really understand what it is. The key phrases are that are within their business. Okay. What other things we understand what we want to achieve as a business, and we communicate it in our own unique style that's within our business. But people that are outside of it looking to come in are often not looking for the same things that we think they're looking for true yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so we may use technical phrases that completely unknowingly because we use them day in day out and you're in the tech world you'll get this um, and therefore we decide actually this is the stuff that people are going to be looking for therefore we'll write all this stuff around this these words but actually nobody is looking for it because they don't get it Okay. Hence why they want to be involved. So using things like once the first point really to create in the con to find out what the content is, is to understand what your business is about in the first place, which is your keyword research. Okay. So how do we So once that? you've done sorry? How do we do that? 
keyword research but there's loads of tools out there paid and free where you can type into these systems um, long tail pro for instance is one of them um, which is a paid for service but very good um, and you type in key phrases because a single a singular keyword nowadays isn't really sufficient but we type in a key phrase as to what we think people may look for and what happens is they'll come back they'll scour the internet not just google but all sorts of places and say x amount of people in the last week month or whatever have searched for these phrases but they'll also give you suggestions as well as to link phrases yeah so it may just be a word or two that's different once you've established actually this is what I want to talk about and there's a good chance people are looking we can then go on to your social media channels and actually start typing those phrases in in a search yep. so you type the phrases in into a search and if it all comes back with zero then you know something's not quite right okay yeah yeah if it comes back with results whatever results they are then you can make a determination as to whether there's a big enough need for you to then go off and create content around that particular phrase. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And the thing is, you don't want to go off and copy other people's content because that's just not the done thing. We all know that. But as people that know their businesses inside, well, you laugh, but I've seen people do it recently. I like, um, <laughs> I like to state the obvious, but. Once you've done that and you go off and you can create it, you can create and put your own spin on to using these key phrases that we yeah. now have researched. We've found out that's what they're looking for. We've actually gone off and found people that are actually um, creating content around that already. And then we go off and create our own content using those as a strategy going forward for what we want to be found for. Right, now let's, let's just stay with that for a moment because if you're just continually finding content and retweeting it and reposting it on Facebook, you're not adding value, are you? Do you have to put your own commentary on it? Oh, yeah, right. you're not copying, you're not just resharing other people's. This is about creating your own content. But oh. to create your own content, let, let's be fair, right? The internet's been around for 20, how many years? About right. I mean, it's right. been around a long time. Um, there is no new content out there. Mm. Whatever you want to talk about has been talked about. Right? There's nothing new. So if you think you've come up with some unique idea and you type it into a search engine, the chances are it's been tried somewhere before. So what we're doing is we're trying to find current up-to-date stuff that people are looking for that pertains to our business. Yeah. Now, to share other people's stuff is great because we all like sharing good content if we see it. To look at something and go, actually, um, I want to talk about that, and I now know people are looking for that, then I'll come on to that, Kelvin, in a minute. Um, and what we're, they're looking for is current, it's up to date, the key phrases all match. You can go off and create your own content around it because ultimately the topic may be similar. But everybody, if they create content from scratch, will put their own individuality into it. Okay. Yeah. If you look at content marketers, if you look at bloggers, the the premise, the fundamentals behind it are all the same. Mm -hmm. Right. The delivery of it, the way that it's written, the way that we put our individuality into it is vastly different. Got you. Right. Yeah. It's, so that's the that's the basis of it. Um, Kelvin, I missed that question because Stephen flashed it up really quick. So keywords are professional photographer at Cambridge at versus home. So uh, this is the thing, um, and I'll hit, hit you between the eyes with this straight away. Uh, there, that's just a key word. Nowadays, to be successful in being found, we need to start looking at key phrases. So we want to expand on those. We want to add those into three to five words, what we're trying to target. So having just a singular on there, on its own, won't cut it. Okay. So how would you so, expand those? So for instance, you may have something like um, business photographer in Cambridge ah, okay. as your phrase. Yeah. yeah, you wouldn't put them as individual ones because photographer on its own 
but it doesn't mean anything. What, what you're wedding photographer, you're a baby, a boudoir, you know, um, a product photographer, or any of that. It's not specific enough. To be found for what you want, you have to have a longer phrase, so therefore when you repeatedly use it within your content, then it becomes the strength, the thing that Google will point people towards if they're looking for a business photographer in Hertfordshire, Cambridge or whatever, then you'll come up and be found because that's what you're writing about. If you're just talking about being a photographer, I'm a great photographer, I create da, 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 all of that, then you'll be so far down the rankings, then it's going to be completely irrelevant. Nobody's going to see you. Yeah. I think at this, this point, it, it is. I mean, there's no wrong ways to do this. There's just better ways, aren't there? And um, when we, when you, obviously now when you're talking about key words, you're talking about key phrases rather than key words. Yeah. Right. Where else can we uh, find content that we can make our own? Yeah. Um, are from your audience. Okay. It's from the people that you're already connected with. Um, one of the biggest and most powerful things that you will ever have as an online marketer for your business is your email list everybody works to get subscribers and then the subscribers are they're great because they'll sit there and they'll read your emails that go out and they'll buy a few bits and pieces and all of that stuff but you know what what we don't do is we don't use them as a, um, a resource to research yeah so when was the last time anybody that's watching this ask yourself this question when was the last time you put a survey out to your subscribers? Or when was the last time you asked them what they wanted? What content would you like me to? Not recently. I've lost sound now. How in depth? Very, very rarely. Do... All right, and we're back. I haven't done it recently. Um, and do we still have sound? Can you hear me? I think we've got a, a bad connection. If anybody can hear Kevin, can you just type in? I can hear Kevin. And if you can hear me, can you type? In? I, I can, can hear, hear you. Steven. I've not. I've not changed anything. <laughs> All right, you're coming back. No, it's, it's not us. This this is beta technology, and when it works, it's brilliant. When it doesn't, um, we have one or two okay. problems. Right, and Sean's saying that she last asked her people six months ago, and uh, she can hear you, Kevin, which is good. Okay. Uh, thank I you. Mean, would, it be, would it be unreasonable to email your list once every six to eight weeks and say, what type of content would you like to hear from? Is there any burning desire to learn more about? Yeah. Could you include that in the newsletter you send out? something like great ways to do this is we've been talking a lot in one of our private um we do the business blogging school and um, one of the things that we do in there is we get people to create uh quizzes okay. um and the blog post is like a quiz so you you go through a series of questions with different answers and it gives you results at the end now you could do something very similar to get people to interact with you so, so you can find out where they are. You know, what level of subscribers do you have? What level of audience do you have? Do you have an audience that's really, um, so for us, do we would put it out and we would ask questions. Of do you know what a call to action is now if all of the answers come back yes we know that they're not entry level bloggers if all yeah. of the answers come back no we know that we're dealing with a lot of people reading that particular post that haven't got an absolute clue what it is so we if we start talking more advanced stuff they're not going to get it yeah yeah okay yeah? so you need to keep so, in touch with your audience well, it's the only way to do it. And Sarah runs the majority of our emails that go out. Um, I have yet to be let completely loose on it. Um, but she...
does a great a little bit too it's not really our audience calling it a newsletter they wouldn't be interested um okay. but we we send them an email out um, and it can be anything it could be have you seen this latest offer that's out uh, not from us but from somebody else yeah. we often tell them about image packs that are available stuff pertaining to our industry um and i know i think you're on our uh mailing list aren't you Stephen? i am of course i am i've been on young business for years so <laughs> so we, we send out a variety of stuff. Now, Sarah did send one out the other day that was pretty much asking for people's feedback. It was yep. asking them to complete something. Um, right. I don't know if you saw that one. I think it went out last week or the week before. Um, it was anonymous, so you didn't have to fill any details in, name or anything like that, and it was just answer this series of questions for us. Okay. Yeah? yeah. And, you know, would you be interested? in a video put their email address in and subscribe because they want your updates so people that are interested in what you do or supporters yeah. of your brand and it's going to them and saying look we're not so far up ourselves that we're going to dictate all of the time what you're going to hear we want you to come back and say what you'd like to hear yeah it keeps us in touch with reality yeah it's, it's, it's like i mean you, you are teaching people um how to how to blog better uh and but you've got to listen to what they're saying haven't you? you can't just be a teacher with a syllabus and go endlessly through the syllabus you've got to take feedback and react to it and other maxima people that help us with ideas to create more content because if somebody comes back and go oh this is such a timely thing i've really been struggling with this this and this in my business marketing recently and this is the reason why well that could be content for us because if one person's struggling then you can pretty much guarantee there's more people that are struggling but just not put their hand up to say they're struggling yeah gotcha yeah so because not everybody's like me that speaks out as you know <laughs> I, I, I know as slow as you find which is good now but going back to our, our content creation uh thing are there any other places that we can we can go well first of all let's go back to the central question is why do we do content creation at all um seo as it used to be is reasonably old hat now um where you used to put a load of dodgy things in your site to try and trick the search engines to get it ranked higher than everybody else um they now tend to call it content marketing which is a form of seo yeah okay. so what we do is we create content to build the authority of a site up so we use key phrases within our content so google sees a repeat relevant link within our content that's very uh, we don't do we get it in the purpose i think we've just hit over 600 blog posts on saki media now yeah uh, if we could write 600 blog posts about content you know we must know something about it indeed it, it, indeed. it shows that you've got a wealth of knowledge about what your chosen field of expertise is mm -hmm. um because if people want to find an expert to get involved if somebody suddenly goes oh i need to get involved with this blogging game where do i go yeah if they come to two one has a, is that my audio that's cutting out Are you there Stephen? yeah i'm here sorry i was just yeah. i was just typing i can hear you perfectly now um Good. Yeah, I, I know there's sound issues, but I think we're just going to have to get through it. Um, unfortunately, if people can't hear it, then nothing that you or I can do about it. Well, indeed, indeed, we'll just have to battle on. 
I mean, I've, I've had the same problem too. I've caught the end of your sentences. So if it seemed a bit disjointed, it's because you've been talking and I can only catch the end of it. Can you hear everything I'm saying? You can hear perfectly. So oh, your audio, your visual's going a little bit iffy now and again. That's because I keep moving. Yeah. If I keep still, I'll be okay. If I don't move. A little bit blurry. <laughs> Well, I'm looking forward to the day when you can you can wave your hand and it won't slow the video down. Um, but I'm looking forward to the day where we can reach in the screen and I can pat you on the back. Ha! Uh, that was that would be something, wouldn't it? That wouldn't would that be, be quite nice. good if you could touch touch your shoulder on the screen, right? Yeah. And a little hand come, a virtual hand comes out and pats you on the shoulder. Wouldn't that be freaky? Yeah, do a handshake, put a real handshake. Yeah. That 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 would be that would be totally freaky. No, it really would. Right, does anybody who's watching have any questions at all or any comments or just want to say hi? If you just type hi in the on the Facebook page, we can see it within BeLive.tv and we can respond. We thank you, we thank Nathan and Maxima and Sean and Peter and Kelvin, all of whom have commented so far. Um, if you're out there, just say something and you'll see it magically appear. That's that, that's it, Nathan. Basically, we find that if you if you stick with it, it will eventually sort itself out. It's just a pain in the derriere when uh, when it doesn't. So uh, hopefully, uh, you can hear us both now, and um, we should be okay for the rest. Uh, thank you, Sean. Um, yeah, we we I mean we've been in this game quite a number of years, haven't we, Kevin? I hope we're Kevin. For us, um, because as you know, Sarah got very much involved in the blogging side and the marketing side before I did. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was always overhearing a lot of the stuff that was going because we share an office. Mm -hmm. So I was always listening and hearing and listening to the coaching calls and all of that. And it's only been the last three. transport all the time to going over to talking about this stuff but you know what um, it's been in our working lives pretty much for 10 years plus yeah mm. so but I think that gives us an advantage I think it's you know how I've done it from Yeah, I'm. I'm watching for when you stop talking because I can't hear. I can't hear you. Um, can't hear me. <laughs> I can now. <laughs> it's, co it's coming and going. I mean, like you, we've been in. I can hear a background noise now. Yeah, that's one of my daughters um, stomping around because they're off for, of school this week. Oh right, okay. So, half term. It's a, half term is a wonderful thing. Um, <laughs> Yeah. But uh, yeah, they're they're um, eleven and twelve now, and of course you've met them. Yes. Um, so uh, yeah, they've got much bigger, much taller. Their shoes seem to be getting bigger heels on them as well nowadays. So, but uh, yeah, I mean that this this video uh, that we're using now, this is this is also a great way to create content because we've been involved in this since the days of Blab. Yeah, there we go. They're just getting more trouble. Oh, hello. Hello. You are live on air on <laughs> that's, Facebook. And that's my youngest. Uh, so, um, yes, the days of Blair, but, but you know, remember that we got involved in this in the days of the Hangouts. Indeed, indeed. And indeed. even in, even with Google Hangouts, we could make recordings of those. Yep. Um, and use that content because I've got some very interesting um, video record. Did Google Hangouts that are on my header, as we know. Mm. Indeed, I'm just waiting. But. To Ah. 
Right. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. I think you've gone silent. Shall we take a can anyone hear Kevin? Can you just say yes or no, please? I'll say something, shall I? Yes, that would help. It would help with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm freezing and no sound. Right, I think I think you're back now. Um, oh, okay. Okay, you are back now. You're back totally. Next time you go, if if you uh, if it go, if it goes again, uh, and uh, everybody's watching, will let you know. If you can just refresh, and we'll we'll try and see if yes. that does anything. Um, it is, it is frustrating and the recording is going to be fun. I can see that. Um, yeah, yeah I mean, I'm it, just going to pull. Okay, video is, is, a, is a great way to, uh, to create content and uh, really enjoy being involved in all these shows. And most of the time it works perfectly. And when it works perfectly, it's fun. <laughs> but when you can't hear the person you're talking to, <laughs> it's mysterious it's a bit tricky uh, it is a bit it def definitely tricky definitely um but, we'll but if you look at content um regarding live video now you've got a number of things here because you've got the actual recording of this as well that you could break down into content so you could take sound bites from it uh, whether that's the full length you know a minute here or whatever so you could use that in multiple different ways but you've also got people interacting on here. Oh yeah. So if people want to come in and ask questions, well, yeah, we can have the conversation, we can talk about it, we can give them the answers here and there, but it also gives us ideas for creating written content as well. Oh yeah. Because these are real people on these. I, I, we've met some of them, so we know they're real. Um... Yeah, I mean, it, it is a great way to, I mean, it's not just the show itself. Um, it's after the show, what happens afterwards. And you've got to go back and, and interact with everybody who's interacted with the show. And uh, thank you, everybody, for attending. And if, if new people are joining us, if you could just say hi, we can see how many people are watching, we can't see who. So if you just type in hi, you will see yourself on TV. Simple as that. That's the exchange. If you type in a word, we will see it and you will go up on screen just like CJ. And that's all there is to it. If you type, we will put your picture and your text on screen. Um, now, the, the thing is that this, the, the moment this, this system, BLO.TV, uh, is free whilst it's in beta. And the beta tag is on there because it doesn't work all the time. Um, but we've, we've got, we're waiting for the platforms to come out as well. These are interesting times. Yeah, I mean, Blue Jeans last week was faultless, wasn't it? Uh, uh, Blue Jeans was, yeah, it's a different type of environment. Um, are you still seeing the emojis? No, no, we're not CJ. So they don't transfer over, but um, yeah, I mean, all of these platforms, they're new, you know, and whatever they hash into some. So there's always going to be things that aren't quite right. Some have good components, some are missing components, some are unstable, some are stable. You know, the, the thing is with all of these is, um, who out of all of them are going to create something that's firstly either free or affordable yeah. um, to okay. individuals and business owners and that has the reliability and remember with Google Hangouts we never paid a bean for that we didn't, no, no I mean, it was absolutely did. free yeah, yeah exactly. all of these platforms that are coming out are initially going in beta testing for free and then they want to charge you for using somebody else's platform well yeah they do want to charge um i mean fire talk have put their pricing out last week and to have four people on four people on screen uh is 49 dollars a month unlimited but, shows but, but the it, desire for people to want to pay that what's the uh, currently 
for somebody, it's not a tested enough system. Yeah? Mm. Yep. It's still not tested enough. If, they, if you look in the marketing world, look at WordPress, for instance. So use WordPress as a platform, it's still free. Yep. You don't pay to install WordPress on a website. No. no. It's, it's free. After all these years, it's still free. Yet yeah, we do pay for themes and plugins and all these other bits that components that, that enhance it. But you know, I sit here and I look at these platforms and I'm currently struggling to see any convincing reason irrespective of how I make these platforms as yet. No, I, I, I agree. I mean, I, Leland and I, who will be on here at five o'clock today with Across the Pond, are the same mind that this is beta technology. We're testing it. We're not the target audience. Um, we know that. We appreciate that. The target audience is uh, people who are willing to pay hundreds, if not thousands of dollars a month. That's the main target uh, and to attract audiences in the thousands. We are but simple beta testers. But we can enjoy doing it. And that's that's the main thing. But to actually try and charge for a platform, I mean, Fire Talk are charging uh, pretty soon, but they don't go to Facebook Live, and we know that the audience is on Facebook Live. The people watching us now haven't had to leave Facebook, and that's the key, the key to all this: uh, Be Live and Huzzah and uh, Smile Time and Blue Jeans. Um, or go to Facebook, and Facebook is where people are. Facebook, that's where we are. That's where we pop in at the time. I sort of disagree with the um, the fact that we're not the audience because I, I do think we are part of the audience. I think we are potential buyers for these systems. Um, and if there was a system that was robust enough and that produced what we wanted it to, I think we would pay fifty dollars, hundred dollars, five hundred dollars a month. Because remember that there are individuals out there that are paying this amount for webinar oh, yeah. platforms for webinars yeah so yeah. so the, we will do it um but there has to be a compelling enough reason and at the moment there isn't so mm -hmm. you know i think they need to look at I, I think it needs to it for it to be worth anything to anybody to be perfectly truthful. And I don't think they've reached that yet. I, I think I this is the start. Um, oh, wait, wait. But I would invest. Yeah, we definitely I would pioneer. definitely invest if it was good enough. So I think I think, I think too. Uh, but we've we've got to decide where to invest. Uh, Blue Jeans will announce their pricing on twenty first November. <coughs> So that should right. be interesting. There have been rumours as to what it will be, but I think it's best to wait. Um, Fire Talk, as I say, $49 a month. Um, Smile Time will always be free. That's the brilliant thing. And Be Live is, is free while it's in beta. Um, and we don't know how long that's going to be, but we should take advantage of it. Um, if you're looking at us at the moment, we are on BeLive.tv. You can go there and the, there's a football match going on in the center of the football match is a big get started button press that and you too can be live on facebook within minutes and the way that it works is you go live on facebook on your own first and then once you've done that you message uh the team daniel and the team at be live and they will then allow you to go two up and send you the link and it's as simple as that and then you can be chatting away like kevin and i are this morning um about creating content and um, right are you still live sir um i'm gonna refresh okay go for it right while kevin's away um if you are into blogging i can only recommend that you join uh sarah and kevin's blogging challenge hello kevin can you hear me perfectly um i've just been talking about people should join your blogging challenge okay that's what i did while you're away oh okay <laughs> <laughs> did i see a question come up from sean uh yes yeah, sure okay all right 
which is, is, is the best platform so far. <sighs> right. Best technically, I think, Kevin, is blue jeans, isn't it? Because it's not the same technology as everybody else and it's, it simply works and we don't get as many problems there. And the video and sound quality, probably the best of all the lot. But we're probably going to see pricing, which is commensurate with that. So uh, because they have a host of blue chip companies, thousands of blue chip companies just to use them on the system and they're high end. Uh, Huzza.io, uh, I, I, we haven't been back there. I mean, we did a road test of it, didn't we, a few months back. And we had six of us on screen, mm. but we've not been back since. <coughs> So that brings us down to uh, three then. If I talk doesn't go to Facebook, and um, so that brings us down to Smile Time and Be Live. Which do you like, Vesco? Um, I'm not really sure, to be honest. Um, I like the fact that we can have the comments up on here. That saves us having to have other windows open and actually start you know, interacting with people coming through. Whereas the other one doesn't do that, does it? No, no, this is the only one that does it. BeLive.tv is the only one that brings it in because normally we don't have to have two pages open. Yeah. And be because there's a delay between our talking here and it arrive at Facebook, it means it's virtually impossible to do it. Whereas the comments that come here are best. Um, just to finish off Sean's question, if you want to go and you want to have a chat with four people, then I would go to Smart Time. If you want to go one or two up, then I would go be live because, as Kevin just said, the comments here just make life a lot easier. And thank you to everybody who's watching. Uh, yeah, so we've created 40 minutes of content. There we which go. Can, which can, which can <laughs> repurpose. Um, Indeed. Yeah, we're, we're, it's, we are pioneering, and this is this stuff is not perfect, but it's getting better. And uh, uh, you're more than welcome. Um, we really do enjoy using this this technology, Sean. And um, in fact, I've started right. I've to told. Have I told you about my Skillshare courses yet? I'm sure I have. Go on. Tell us about your Skillshare <laughs> courses, Stephen. Thank you for the opportunity, Kevin. It's so kind of you. <laughs> <laughs> right. I've got two Skillshare courses going. Uh, you'll find free coupons on my page for everybody who's uh, connected with me on Facebook. Uh, the first one is going live on Facebook and that covers smile time. And then the second one is live Q&A sessions, uh, which covers how to go on BeLive.tv. So both those are free. Uh, if you want to pick up a copy, then please do so, um, because I want to get the word out. And the other thing is, ex even more exciting than that, and can you imagine anything more exciting than that, is that uh, I'm told that this weekend that the book that I'm co-authoring with Fraser Hay Will appear on Amazon, ah. and that covers that covers everything about going live on uh, on air, and uh, how to do it, how not to do it, and all the platforms are reviewed chart. So, um, and it's it's good. I, it's been it's been an experience because I, I let's put it this way. I I wrote it myself. I did 150 pages. Yeah, the book that goes out will be about 50 pages. So there you go. So. I've got 100 pages for my second book. That's the way I'm looking at it. Awesome. I hope you took the blab section out. Oh, yeah. I, I paid a well, lot. I, I <laughs> well, actually, when I started writing it, of course, blab was still going. Um, but I have, I've taken that, I'm not taking it out, I've written it in the past tense. Uh, right. Because I've, I've met hundreds of people and we had great fun over there. Um, so uh, it is part of the history. I, I know, I mean, Bebo is back. Is it? Bebo is back and it's now eight people on screen and um, you can't record, but you can go and chat to anybody you like. And and they've taken, uh, right, they've taken Blab and deconstructed it and they haven't put, they put it back together properly. That's the thing. I mean, Blab was just, it was spot on, wasn't it? Well, it, it, we always look back with rose tinted glasses. Um, and as much as we enjoyed Blab, it had its frustrations. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, that's, that's and, idea, you know, it, it, it was okay. Um, and the thing is, it set the bar for a lot of the others. 
oh, as yeah. to where yeah. they need to look because it yeah. was pretty first one out as far as I re recall. And then the others started popping up and, you know, well, they were watching and then trying to do other stuff. So <clears throat> it really set the bar for how they were going to start doing this. But um, more than that, now they've sort of evolved all of it because Lab, of course, was a standalone, like Fire yeah. Talk. Um, yeah. And now we're not seeing so many of the standalones being created. We're more seeing the ones that are flowing through Facebook. That's true. Um, That's true. So, uh, and this is all within a year. So what's going to happen in another year, who knows? But, you know, um, it will be, it's an interesting one to watch. Um, Hi, Michelle. Hello, Michelle. It's, it's definitely an interesting one to watch. And, you know, I think, and I've said it a million times before, as much as the written word in business marketing is very, very important for connection for trust building and for being authentically who you are video and live video has to become part of that strategy going forward i think well out, out of nowhere stat came last week and that is that 20 percent of facebook users are watching live video and that's from nowhere so since facebook live came into being 20 percent of the audience which we let's remind ourselves that's 340 million people are actually watching live video on Facebook, mm -hmm. and that number can only grow. So, so now's the time to get into it, isn't it? I mean, I think it's, it's, it's time to start learning the skills, yep. um, finding the environments that will support you, reading the books that are going to help you, getting the practice in, um, and not getting overwhelmed with the whole fear of getting involved in it, because it, this is authentic marketing. OK, if you're doing this for your business, this is really, really authentic because there is no hiding behind 30 year old profile pictures. And what's been really fascinating for me is seeing people are going off doing Facebook lives, which is them. Mm -hmm. And then within a few days, I'm seeing them updating their profile pictures. Yeah. Right. I've seen it happen a huge amount of times and with celebrity people doing it as well. Right, so the airbrushing has gone, and this is who <laughs> they are now. Um, real. And for me, this is absolutely fantastic because you know I don't care what people look like. I've never been superficial that way, but I do care that people are genuine enough to say this is who I am. Um, so I, for me, this has been really, really great in building the trust aspects between business owners and consumers. It is because it's a great way to reach out and actually engage with people. I mean, you can you write a blog. Uh, I just want to tell a little story because of the power of blogging. OK, and I also want to mention Angelica That's because I try and do that every show. Um, Angelica is a German tutor and she's been blogging uh, and she, she's taken the blogging challenges over the years. And Angelica's German.co.uk is a blogging site where you can find resources for um, learning German. And Angelica has been blogging for ages, and uh, she's basically written a blog uh, which was picked up by the, I just got to say this, Deutsche Welle, which is a big German, hundreds of thousands of followers, and she wrote a blog in a day which had 9,000 reads in a day. That's the power of blogging, just to say, blog, and people pick you up. Then it can work, but I enjoy it. I, I prefer video like you. Thanks. Yeah, I, I, I agree. You know, the, the thing is, if we go all the way back to the beginning of where we started this conversation last yeah. week about content and what is what's working, how we create it, the thing is, it's now it's a mix. It is. There isn't yeah. one singular thing that works totally on its own. It has to be a combination interwoven on a regular basis that will give you the exposure that you're looking for as an authority to get the clients to get the interest um, and to build that that um, build up that reputation that you're looking to yeah. build up. So it is important, and the same as blogging is important. The same as the way that you create social media awareness is important, um, and all of these things yeah um so yeah and it's great to do it that way because you know if you think about this the same way that you would 
your business, you know, with your business, you wouldn't just have one customer and rely on one customer because if that customer left, your business would fail. So think of your marketing like that. You would have, if you just did blogging or you just did Facebook Live and suddenly that was taken away from you, then yep. your marketing would fail. So therefore you have different streams crossing over each other. So if for instance, Facebook turn around tomorrow and say, right, we're not doing Facebook Live anymore, and you build your whole audience on Facebook Live, right? Yeah. If you've got other streams crossing over with it, well, yeah, maybe it's in inconvenient, but it's not devastating. Uh, yeah, I take your, fully take your point. Uh, having built my career around Facebook Live in the last three months, I shall now diversify. Now, you're quite right, though. I mean, I've got to, you've got to have the blog. You've got to have the whole thing. Um, and just to give a, a nod, I took a, a challenge from Nikki Creel the other day. Uh, whose book, uh, Converting Conversations to Customers, is out at the moment. And her challenge was to revamp my LinkedIn profile. So it didn't have a photograph from 10 years ago, and it had up to date text. <laughs> and I've done that, and she and I will be doing a show uh, next month where we revisit the old profile and the new profile. You can see them side by side and decide, and uh, then go and buy Nikki's book, or possibly buy Nikki's book. Well, LinkedIn have done some interesting stuff lately, and they're having a bit, something's gone on behind the scenes with LinkedIn. I don't know what it yeah. is. I'm trying to get to the bottom of it, and I can't. Um, but some secret stuff's happened. And what's the byproduct of that secret stuff, which we're not quite sure what it is, is people are getting actually warm leads and business from LinkedIn more than ever before. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know how. I don't know what's going on with it. But it seems to have dropped its stuffy corporate uh, i'm going to sell to you at every opportunity yeah. type attitude of the people contributing and people seem to maybe warmed up slightly um to the fact that you can't just email someone on linkedin connect email sell you know there has to be a bit yeah. more to it than that um but real business is being done on there more so than ever before and it's been the last six to twelve months that's good news um, well, it's interesting considering last year they were looking at going under and then they were bought out, weren't they? They were. And they I were wonder really. if that's what the change is that they've been now bought and therefore the top people are saying, oh, hang on a minute, your platform's great, but your attitude stinks. Um, let's do something about this. Um, yeah. You know, and, yeah. and often change happens at the top behind the scenes where we don't see it always, but stuff yeah. could be going on. Yeah, I think it, as Michelle also said, there's still a lot of uh, people who don't get networking and sending out the emails. Uh, yeah, and you will. And I go networking events where people shove cards in my hands still after 20 years of people saying don't do it. Um, you know, you're still going to get that to a degree wherever you go. Um, but, you know, the trend is changing as far as I see it. If I, if I dust the cobwebs off my business cards, can I just pass you one? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's changed, hasn't it? It's, it's totally changed. I mean, it's got more personal rather than than impersonal. I mean, networking, um, as we know, it's, it's changing things. If it's changing LinkedIn for the better, then we all win, don't we? Because uh, yeah. I don't um, have business cards anymore. I burn them. I threw all my business cards away. I haven't had them for years. I, but I had to go to uh, four N of arrived in devices. Um, so I went. To, oh I yes. Invited, I was invited to a four end meeting, and you can't turn up there without your business cards. Can we? Why do you stay? Yeah, but you, 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 you share. Um, yeah. I mean, real, real life networking uh, is, is 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 wonderful, uh, but obviously we can't meet up all the time. Whereas through the magic of video, uh, we we can meet up whenever we want. We could keep this show going all day, but we won't because we've got real, real work to do. <laughs> well, I still look forward to the day where I can shake your hand via a virtual reality 3D. Um, uh, that would just be awesome, wouldn't it? Um, and I don't think we're that far away from that technology. I, I, I was thinking I, I, about I, getting I, some business cards. Yeah. Michelle, you know what? My view on business cards is, is really quite, um, I, it's my view, but I think. Um, 
that if people want to connect with me, I'd rather um, put their details in a phone, give me their name, and I'll connect with them there and then on my phone. I'll go and find them on LinkedIn or Facebook on my phone there and then. Um, and they can do the same. Everybody has smartphones in business now. It's not like we used to have the Blackberries and the Nokias and all of that, where you couldn't do this stuff. Nowadays, you've got it all to hand. You don't need a business card, in my opinion. Um, all the print business cards would disagree, of course. But um, I would rather have them as a connection on LinkedIn. If I'd met them at a networking event and they said, look, let's stay in touch. Okay, let me connect with you on LinkedIn or Facebook yep. or wherever. Um, and therefore start deepening that relationship outside of that networking meeting. Because the problem when you meet at networking is you walk out of that meeting, you put the card down somewhere, you lose it, you forget it or whatever. And you probably don't give them a second thought until you see them in two or four weeks time. Whereas if you connect with them there and then, if you want to, and obviously it's a choice, then, um, then you can keep in touch with them instantly. You can find out more about them and their business without having to have a three hour meeting over a coffee that leads to nothing. You know, you can just go and look at their LinkedIn profile and go, oh great, I didn't know that about you. You know, you run the Salvation Army for 25 million years. You're a really nice person. Why are you now selling mobile phones? Um, <laughs> but you get my point. Uh, yep, yep, uh, yep, yeah, we do. Uh, anybody who's watching is new, who's just arrived, if you type on the, in typing text on Facebook, we'll see it here and we can react to it virtually instantly. This is Kevin and Stephen on BeLive.tv, ostensibly talking about creating content, but generally speaking, just having a good time. Um, talking it's to friends. It's evolved. <laughs> It's morphed as it always does. We've gone wildly off topic. We have, but I mean, we are creating content as we do this. So, you know, I mean, we're doing what it says on the tin. Uh, and Peter's checking in again. Welcome, Peter. Welcome back. Uh, Hello, Peter. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it is. Right, okay. Shall we come back next month with a new topic? Let's come back next month with a new topic. That's a deal then. We just need to decide on a topic which we can do behind the scenes. Um, we can do that. Yeah. yeah. I think this platform, what do you think of the platform? This is our first outing on it. But it's working, it's great. Yeah. When you came um, back. I really like the, I really like the comments that we can see the comments. Um, you know, for me, that's a big winner. Because I can see Peter come in and I'm not ignoring him. I'm saying, hi, Peter, hope you're well. Great to see you back. I haven't got to check Facebook um, and all of that stuff. And I really, really like that. For me, all of this stuff has always been about talking to the people that are watching. Yeah. yeah. I've always said that. And my biggest bugbear with Huzza was the interaction on the sidebar was terrible. Um, and that you couldn't connect with people and have side chats and all of that stuff. I get this is slightly different because this is on a Facebook Live, it's a different platform, but it's always the focus has to be on the people that are spending their time and watching and listening and getting involved. And one of the worst things that I've seen on these platforms, and I've come off of millions of them, where people make a comment, a sensible comment towards yeah. the conversation, there may only be five or ten people in and then they're ignored. Yeah. Well, I think that's, you wouldn't do it if they were face to face with you, you wouldn't just yep. ignore them. Um, you wouldn't do it on the phone. And if they emailed you, you wouldn't do it. Well, I would hope you wouldn't do it. Um, yet people on Facebook Live do it all of the time. And I can't understand it. For me, it's a, it's a killer of a business. You know, it will destroy you if you carry on doing that. Um, so for me, it's much about, I really like the fact that you can see it. Yep. It's, it's not about me and you, it's about everybody, isn't it? That's the key. I mean, as you say, you see people come on here on Facebook Live and they're just peddling their own wares and totally unconcerned about everybody else. Whereas we listen, and our last question of the day comes from Peter, which is a blogging question. <clears throat> you find it hard to write about what to write about on my pest control blog. Well, Peter, yours is a really interesting and a really fascinating one because you've got one of those real life businesses, one of those where on a daily basis you'll come across situations that 
you will consider boring, you'll consider you've been it, you've done it, you've seen it, it's really not very interesting. And one of the biggest blocks that people in business have is they believe what they do will not be interesting to their audience, so they dismiss it. Well, let me point you in the right direction here. Part of the reason that you write a blog is to show your capabilities, your expertise, and to educate. When you do stuff like a day in the life of a pest controller, right? When you do stuff about um, how you dealt with certain situations that you came across, so you had a, a load of bats or whatever, right? People like that stuff. It's almost like virtual reality through a blog post because it, it's what you've experienced. And I, I know you've got employees as well. Um, you need to think about situations that you've been in in the last few years that would be interesting to people. So for instance, if you come across unusual situations, then blog about that. Because you can guarantee, and I said this with Stephen earlier, we talk about no content is new content. Well, no situation is a new situation, but it can be something that people find or have faced before. And you show your expertise by showing how you've dealt with this stuff. Yeah. So look at a day in the life of a pest controller, you know, and all of those types of things. Oh, hang on. Sarah's writing something to me, and I don't know what she's writing. She's writing <laughs> spider mouse in Australia. They had a spider that captured mouse mice in Australia, and it was all over the Guardian and the internet yesterday of a giant. Oh. spider that had caught a mouse. Oh, did you, hear, did you hear that, Peter? So in Australia, they found there was a giant spider that caught a mouse, and it was all over the uh, world news yesterday. So if you want something topical to write about, write about that, because that's what people yeah. will be looking for. Um, no, I've yeah. not seen your Facebook video, but we're talking about you, what you want to write to blog about. Um, so... <clears throat> use that stuff if you've got video incorporate that within your blog so yeah. use that content again don't just put it up on facebook and put it as a video take that video and put it within a blog post because it will serve you more by having it and building your site because there is no dual content or anything like that you can put your video in as many places as you like facebook youtube your blog everywhere it doesn't matter it's a video yeah I'll click the wrong one. Oh, this is live TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make your videos. So, in, yeah. now, the easiest way to do that, and officially they're called vlogs, but we'll, we'll, we'll just say they're in, uh, videos incorporated into blogs, is you just use the highlights and the bullet points throughout the course of that video to create the content for the written aspects of that blog. Yeah. Yeah? So, you don't transcribe it word for word because there'd be no point bloody watching it then. Um, you can give them some of the highlights. Look out at minute 28 because something really fantastic happens here, blah, 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 whatever. Yeah, create a little bit of hype around the video. And then, of course, people are going to probably scroll all the way through to minute 28, but they're starting to watch it. That's the point. It means they've read it and they're starting to watch it. And the next time, then they'll think, well, what happens before that? And then they'll probably watch all of it. You know, it's human nature, curiosity. So reuse those videos into blog posts. But yeah, for a pest control, there's any, you know, I had this with a locksmith a number of years ago, a friend of mine that wanted to start blogging about being a locksmith. And he had exactly the same thing. Well, what can I write about that's, you know, uh, gonna be of interest to people about this type of thing? And he was what they deemed to be a non-destructive locksmith. So therefore, he wouldn't just get a sledgehammer and smash your door in. He was a master locksmith that right. could pick pretty much any lock. Um, it, it was quite fascinating to watch him work, actually. Um, but um, And he ended up writing, without going into too much detail, because he was involved in repossessions and things like that, which could be a little bit, you know, you've got to be a bit careful about what you write. Um, and obviously, you don't want to start naming people in situations. Um, but 
you know, he was writing about different scenarios, about different levels of security within the insurance industry, you know, different types of locks. And he also did security audits as well for people. So he would talk about all of that. And with pest control, there's a health and safety element that comes in as well. So there may be lots of different things that you can write about. So where does pest control come into the world of health and safety for restaurants? Well, I know it does because they have certain hygiene laws and all of that stuff coming in place. How does it come into the normal workplace? How does it come into an office? How does it come into an office kitchen? I mean, you could go through a whole heap of different things just regarding the law on health and safety um, and pest control. What to do if you find a in depth? Yeah. yeah. What What do you do if you find a tarantula in your bathtub, for instance? Uh, <laughs> you know. Um, a kill Aberdeen. Sorry. Sorry, Karen. But yeah, so there's loads of stuff that you can do. And you may think that some of that stuff is repetitive, some of it's boring. But the fact is, firstly, you're showing your expertise. Secondly, you're building the authority of your site for your niche, for what you do in the area that you do it. And thirdly, anybody that comes across your site will look at it and see, you know what, you know what you're talking about, your experience, guys. Yeah, you've told me on your about page, you've been running your business for 35 years, but, you know, they don't care about that. They don't care that there's three blokes that have got between them 120 years experience. It doesn't matter. What they want is to listen and read and watch real information, real experience. And that is by, in effect, storytelling through a blog post. Good. And just last point from Peter, uh, he's worried about repeating himself. Yeah, but you won't repeat yourself. If this comes back to um, when you write your blog posts, we write each blog post for a particular type of customer. Okay, we call it the customer avatar. Um, we focus very specifically when we write one com piece of content on one person. And therefore, you could write the same article for three different avatars and it sounds completely different, but have the same base content in it. Because you're using different language, you're using different inflections, you're laying it out slightly differently. You may be making some of the similar points, but the way you're presenting it is different. Yeah. Does that make sense? It makes sense to me, Kevin. I'm sure it makes sense to Peter as well. We can always ask him again. On Thursday morning at 10 o'clock, I'm loving for Britain. Any more questions? Yeah. Any more questions? Hey, well, if you want to know more about that stuff um, and you are really, really struggling with it, hook up with me on Skype. Um, and we'll, I'll give you 20 minutes, half an hour of my time, and we'll talk about it properly on there, like one-to-one, -one, so you can ask questions direct. Um, I'm happy to do that, mate. It's not a problem. Um, and we can nail it down for you. And the content calendar we can throw over to you, you know, we'll sort you out. Um, but, yeah. Brilliant. I said brilliant. Though. Yeah, just send me a message on Facebook, and we'll sort it out. John Upton, advertisers show the same product repetitively. Why can't... Hang on. View. There you go. Talk about the same product repeatedly. It's John, you're right, and it's about reframing it. Yeah. We we talk, if you look at the stuff that we talk about in our blog posts, and we'll talk about lots of different aspects to blogging, but ultimately what is the product at the end of it? Well, the product is either one of our courses or booking us one to one to help and coach people. So the product is the same at the end, but we're leading them down a slightly different path. It's reframing the content and the information to lead them down to the path of this is the authority that we're building. Yeah. So you're, you're absolutely right. People have been doing it for years. Well, the key to it is making it sound different, even though it's the same information. And this is where more accomplished and more skill in blogging starts becoming involved. And if you're a creative thinker, a creative writer, uh, Sarah is much more so than I am. Um, I struggle with that sometimes, then you'll find it a bit easier. But there are tools and techniques that you can use that will help you. Brilliant. Anybody else? Last call? Uh, I guess we can, we can, I mean, John's here, Peter's here, and Kerry's here. We can all blunt for Britain. Um, <laughs> <laughs> 
in the but we won't make. No, no, we, we're, we're talking about content creation and we've been doing that for the past hour. Um, well, well, if there's, I'm going to have to shoot off in a minute, Stephen, because I've got to go yeah. and get two new tyres for my car. Um, okay. The joys of having the flexibility in my business to be able to go out in the afternoon and spend all our uh, hard earned money on tyres. Um, <laughs> but as winter's coming into the UK, you know, yeah. uh, tyres are a priority, guys. I warn everybody every year. That's the four bits of rubber that keep you safe on the road. So make sure your tyres are in good nick. Um, so if you haven't, go out and check them. Don't worry about what the plot say and all of that. If you think they're unsafe, get them checked out properly because this year I think is going to be a harsh one. They're saying that, aren't they, Kev? We, we, if we're snowed in, we can always broadcast. Um, right, OK. <laughs> <laughs> we can't. <laughs> Wishing everyone a good week. If you're around on Facebook at five o'clock, I'll be here with Leland, but Kevin and I will be back next month with a brand new topic, a brand new show. Where does that phrase come from? Um, no idea. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Brilliant. See you later, Kevin. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks, everybody, for watching and for jumping in. Really, really enjoyed it today. Okay. Take care, everybody. We'll see you all later. Bye for now. And it's probably still closing down, isn't it? So uh, I've got this to myself. Hopefully it's closing down. I've pressed the button. Um, and it doesn't want to go. I'm here on my own. What's going on? I can't leave. People's... That's better. Bye. <laughs>